More than 80,000 people cramming into the MCG for this. Carlton v Collingwood. Carlton to book a spot in the finals. Collingwood playing for a top four, four spot, Ross. And they have very different styles, don't they? Carlton, the clearance and the stoppage sort of game with uh, trying to congest yeah. it up a little bit versus the uh, speed of Collingwood. Well, their midfield's been elite stoppage. Get it to their forwards one-on-one. -on -one. Kerno and McKay, very difficult to beat. But when they get the ball, if they win it off intercept like here, he's lost. They're very controlled. Yeah. They don't go quick like Collingwood, which we'll see in the next couple of quicks. They, they look for the spare. They make them defend. Very controlled, very organised, very deliberate. So teams need to take that off them, control their stoppage game and take off this control. But they tend to separate the defence. They make them all accountable. And it's very predictable. They get numbers to the contest and that's how they play, yeah. which is the antithesis of what we're about to see with Collingwood. So it's very deliberate, but they give teams an opportunity to set up defensively and they want to work their way through it. So I think Collingwood can handle that sort of ball. Yeah, it worked extremely well against Melbourne. And versus this from Collingwood. You... Well, this is Collingwood's yeah. transition game, isn't it? Like, just bang. That's the opposite of Lewis and off. And they're off to the races. Look at Dacos run here. And they're through the corridor. They get out wide here, but their preferred option and they make, they disrupt the fences very quickly and score very quickly. It's their mode, that's why the Collingwood fans are excited and that's why they're always in the game because they keep coming at you, they keep coming at And this is a classic, this is, what is it, they're 10 points down, straight up the corridor, almost to a contest, but it's risk versus reward. So there's the goey, hopefully he comes back in. And this is the challenge Collingwood are going to throw at the Carlton defence. Yeah, so. That's what we love about Collingwood this year. They weren't doing that last year and they've taken it on. They've taken risks, but they're getting their rewards. But when you win 11 in a row, Ross, you're going to be watched. And well, we go to opposite. school yeah. behind the goals tape. So look at this, the, the, the Swans Pentagon there. So yeah. that side bottom, they want to go in the corridor. The Swans have done their homework. They've got five anticipating yeah. this. In. What is it, six minutes in? Bang, it's a turnover. They go forward and score. And we'll see another clip. So the Swans really prepared for this. We, they want to get through the corridor. Well, we're taking... Don't be beaten by what you know. Take their strength off them and they kick a goal. Yeah. Yes. And we'll see this next clip also. They really chase from behind also. But you can see here, they keep persisting. They're down. There's Dave, a bit of a missed kick, but Buddy sliding up and turning it over. The other key was... They're forward pressure. We know they want to go quick. We know they want to run and gun. And the Swans were just at them. Pressure from the front, chase from behind. They get it. Then they have to win it back again. There's the frontal pressure, turnover, and they just keep at them and at them. And don't let them get the flow going. Don't let them get through the corridor. Here it is in the third quarter. Pendlebury, beautiful. Year. There's the chase. Cover the runner, at him, under pressure. Turn it over, up the corridor, and they go. So Carlton need to go to school on this. Yeah, and these are the men, Ross, I want to talk about from Carlton, who they were brilliant at the start of the year, but they're a young forward quartet. And so you've got, obviously, Fisher, Durden, uh, obviously, Motlop and Owie. So well, this young four, and yeah. I think they've tied since round four, uh, the latter part of the year, now ranked 14th for pressure. Well, none of them are shaving, are no. they? they? The innocence of youth. But they need to get the work. They need to watch the Swans tape. I saw Logan McDonald chasing. I saw Franklin chasing. Yeah. You know what? Desire drives willpower. Willpower drives effort. You want to play final, son, you bring the heat. Yeah, I've admired Collingwood's forward line for what they've got. Uh, they've been brilliant this year, but I looked at it on the weekend against the Sydney Swans and they didn't get a right, great return from them. Obviously, Ginevan got injured, but uh, Meyer checked six. Jamie Elliott's a barometer. He only had six. Johnson, eight. Hoskin Elliott, nine. And McCreary, ten. They were so, very yeah. subdued. And Cameron yeah. and Cox didn't go forward and do anything. Yeah. So, so they'll be stunned. McCray will get his arms around yeah. them. So we'll get you some quicker ball movement. You need to get to work. Because it, it was on Collingwood yeah. like, really, their quiet forward line. So they're nippy and they're dangerous. They'd been up for a long time. And yet it's not a bad thing to have a loss like that. I'm going for Collingwood to beat Carlton. Yeah, I week. think... No, I think Carlton take great confidence yeah. out of what they did. They get... Chera back. Yeah. Maybe they bring in a Williams. I think they get belief. They got the desire. I think they get it done. OK. Well, Melbourne and the Brisbane Lions is a huge one on Friday night at the Gabba. And we want to look at Melbourne's form. It's been a real battle for a long period of time. So let's take a look at it, Ross. And these are the numbers. Yeah, have they seduced us a bit? Yeah, 10-0 on the back of the Premiership. But when you drill in, nine of the ten wins were teams sitting outside of the eight. So not playing the, the cream of the competition. Second half of the year, they get to the cream of the competition. They've played the eight, top eight teams eight times out of the 11 games. 3-5. Yeah. So I've got some real concerns about their, 
their, their football and particularly their ball movement out of defence. Last year they were ranking higher than this and they're not scoring. Yeah, we looked at the entries last week. We're going to look at them again. So I still don't see what the method and the thought is. So it's just safe, isn't it, Ross? So they're kicking not to be hurt rather than trying to hit to yeah. a loose Well, player. I think you've nailed yeah. on the head. And, and they talk about it. We want to defend first. They get their, they, behind the ball, great integrity because they're all they're deep entries. They don't really pass it in much. They get contests, they get front and square, they get layers of defence. But they're leaving goals on yeah. the table because it's long and they're putting players like Brown and then under pressure. So, look, they're going to back it in, but the numbers tell you they're about eighth for scoring. So yeah. if they don't tweak it, I'm not sure they can win it. So we believe it's more method than personnel, yet they've gone personnel. So it's now Petrarca and Gorn who are spending a lot of time forward to try and solve this forward issue for Yeah, them. you've picked that up, yeah. Lloydie. So I, I think they'll score, but they need better ball movement. Yeah, and now this, I, I want to put it on these two. I'm putting it on Joey Danaher and I'm putting it on Eric Hipwood. So they get nine disposals a game, these two. And I want to measure them up against guys like Hawkins and Cameron, the score involved. Assist. I don't think they do enough apart from the goals they kick. Yeah, I'm not sure how it's set up, but you yes. made a great point. You made me aware. Like Cameron, he, he gets a lot of inside 50 entry kicks. These guys get on the end or take some contested marks. Maybe they need to increase their hunting territory and get to work. And we've also want to talk about the reliance. So the reliance on some players at the Brisbane Lions. Uh, so he's obviously, this is Stephen May. He's going to be coming up against yeah, these guys. Well, those four you spoke yeah. about, they're going to come up against May, yeah. Petty and Lever. Yeah. So they, as you you highlighted, they're going to have to set themselves for a tough battle forward and deliver for their team because that's the sort of defence they're coming up against. They've got to be more than five possession players. Yeah, and that's Jake Lever who will uh, probably take McStay as a third. We want to also talk about Brisbane. So Marcus Windhager, he got kept Neil to 16, got 21 himself. Well, we don't, they don't like us talking about it, but it's on the radar. Lockie Neil gets sat on. They struggle to get across the line. Saints kick straight, they win that game. Make no no bones about it, that happens. And, and Lockie, as great as he is, no one likes being tagged. So, Win Hager, young player, did it. Harms knocked him over last time. Does Harms come in, who's been in the seconds, and knock him over? Yeah. I'm going after Lockie Neal, and then I'm going after this bloke. This is the number two guy, Daniel Rich. So, don't allow Rich to do this off half back. Don't allow Neal to do his thing. And Melbourne have had a great record of James Harms going to Lockie Neal as well. So you wonder if they'll bring him in off the sub vest. But I'm going to back Brisbane in to do it uh, at the Gabba Ross because of the way Melbourne are playing. But they've failed against Melbourne a number of times. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm letting go of the pass. I think Melbourne's form, I'm going to take it for what it is. Brisbane win this at home. Yeah, that's it. All right, Caro, who do you like, Collingham and Carlton? I think Carlton will win and I think Brisbane will win. OK, and I think Collingham without the flu that they all had last week. Yeah. Good things at the MCG. And you know what I'm really looking forward to, in all seriousness? Seeing Carlton in their traditional navy blue jumper playing Collingwood in their traditional black and white jumper on the MCG. Daytime football. It's just going to be fantastic. Can't wait for it.